Hello, fourth grade. Welcome back to another episode of Bath Math. This is the second week of Unit 6 of Data Analysis. Um, last week, you learned or we talked about frequency tables and dot plots. This week, that continues, um, as well as stem and leaf plots. Um, stem and leaf plots are a little bit trickier, um, but once These are the essential questions and sentence stems for the week. Pause the video to read over them, but they are also available on your Math Blend page. Here is the vocabulary for the week. Feel free to pause the video to read over the words and see if there are any you may not know. Okay, so last week we learned about uh, frequency tables and dot plots, but I wanted to revisit frequency tables um, just so that you can see it in a different way as well. Um, let's say you get these data points, um, but the graph that it gives you isn't necessarily um, those numbers in particular, right? So I didn't put, they didn't put two, four, five, six, seven, eight. They didn't put all those numbers. They put them into like categories or sections. So one through five, six through 10, 11 through 15, 16 through 20. Now in doing so, it simplifies it a bit, but it, you need to make sure that you're being detail oriented. And so I think last week, um, there were one or two examples like that or practice problems that I think we got jumbled up on and that's okay. Um, this is all for practice, but I do wanna make sure that we are paying attention, double checking our work and like seeing everything um, in the right way. So uh, with that being said, I want to tally up the numbers that we see that are one through five. So I see two, four, so two, two, so it's one, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, four. So my number would be four. That's one through five. I stop there because the next one is six through 10 and this starts at six. So I have one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I made my tallies and now I'm putting how many I saw within that range. Um, same thing for 11 through 15. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right? And then 16 through 20, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so now we filled out our frequency table um, and then the problem might ask you questions from there or there might be problems that show you this frequency table already completed, but then it gives you a list of different datas, like da data points like this. So it would be like, A would maybe do this and maybe to confuse you, it would have a 10 here and you might not catch that and this might say, what did we say, five or six through 10, and one, two, three, four, five, but you missed it and that was there, and this says five, but your answer choice doesn't, you have to make sure that you double check the work. You have to look at it um, and go through and X out and make sure that each one is correct because they will try to trick you like that um, if they give you the, the frequency table first and then you have to get the data that matches the table. So. It's easy because you're not necessarily figuring anything out in terms of like multiplication, division, fractions, decimals, nothing like that is happening, but you're trying to see how often these data points come up and if the data is matching both the table and the answer choice. Um, so like I said, this is the only thing I just wanted to reiterate on in terms of frequency tables before we jump into stem and leaf plots. Um, let me know if you have any questions on this during Zoom. Um, 
and you'll see during your practice problems for the week, uh, this should come up. Um, but let's jump into stem and leaf plots. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, stem and leaf plots are just a little different than dot plots, and you'll see in a second. Um, but they are a display of data in which digits with larger place value are stems, and digits with smaller place value are leaves. Stem and leaf plots are basically a T-chart, okay? Um, this is gonna push you to just kind of look at it in a different lens or perspective. What it's saying is stems is gonna take the bigger place value. So if you have tens and ones, that's the stems will be the tens, the leaves will be the ones. If you had um, ones and then decimal tenths, then the stems would be the, the whole number, the one, and the leaves would be the decimal number, the tenths, right? So depending on which numbers you're kind of dealing with, um, that is how it'll be categorized. So for the sake of this example, stems, let's say, are the tenths place value, tens, right, whole number, and leaves are the ones place value. So if it gave you a list of data that were, let's say, 20, 21, 35, 36, 38. I just made those up. You're looking at the tens place value, so that'd be two, right? So I would say stems is two, leaves is the one. So for 20, instead of putting them on a number line like we did for dot plot, you are separating those numbers in tens and ones. So knowing your place value is key, and if you need a refresher, go back to unit one. That's when we learned it. But um, so I did 20. I have two for the tens and zero for the ones. All I did was just split that number up. But here's the kicker. I have 21. Do I put beneath? No, it's the same stem. It comes from the same stem. It's just, it's two in the tens place. But instead of zero, I have one as my leaf. So I don't need to replace or redo the two, but I just put the one next to the zero. So now in my mind, I have 20 and 21. That's the only tricky part. So visually, you need to make a connection that you have two numbers and you know you have two numbers because of the two leaves, right? But you don't need to replace or repeat the stem, okay? So I have 20 and 21. Now I have 35. Do I leave the two? Yes, but now you have a new tens value, which is three, and I have the five in the ones place, so I'm gonna put five, okay? So 35 is done. I have 36 now, I leave the three, but I'm gonna continue with my six on the leave side. So 36 is there now. I have 38, I leave the three, add the eight. So from the three stem, if you think about it in branches, you have a stem that's the three in the tens place value and all the leaves that come off of it, I have 35, 36, 38. For the stem that's the 20s, I have 20 with no ones, um, and 21, I have that leaf. So this is what a stem and leaves plot is. It's just weird to get used to, but once you kind of see it visually and it connects, it should be pretty simple. Um, and then based off these types of, um, I guess this visual, you can analyze your data. Um, so let me erase my board and then we'll, we'll keep practicing. <laughs> Okay, let's do a stem and leaf plot um, for the same type of numbers that I gave you in the previous clip. Um, I have tens and ones. In the next clip, I'll show you decimals just to kind of vary it up, but I want you to be able to take a group of numbers like this and not only create a frequency table and a dot plot, but also a stem and leaf plot. So it's just a T-chart. So we're gonna make our T-chart and one side will be stems and the other side will be leaves, okay? Now, taking a look at the numbers, I have 20s, I have 30s, and I have 10s, 10s, 20s, and 30s. So I already know that my stems are going to be one for the 10s, two for the 20s, three for the 30s, right? I don't need to do anything else in the stems. Just by looking at the group of numbers, I can just say one, two, three, done. Now we're looking at the ones. So I'm gonna go through and cross them out and make sure that I'm doing it one by one so I don't miss any. 26, that's gonna be in my twos. I'm gonna put a six. 
30, that's going to be in my threes. I'm going to put a zero because I'm looking at that ones place value. One or 19, I'm going to put in the ones and put a nine. Two, back to the two. Two, I'm going to put a one, right? 24, still in the 20s, I'm going to put a four. Cross that out. 26, I'm going to put a six here. Cross that out. 18, that's in the tens, uh, ones, I'm going to put an eight here. Cross that out. You see, all we're doing is just putting them in the correct category or in the right spot in my stem and leaf plot. Uh, 31, it's in the three, I'm going to put a one. 27, two, seven, right? Two, 21 is two, one. Okay, 17, one, seven, and 19, one, nine. So now I am done creating my stem and leaf plot. And now I can see all of this, num all of these numbers in the same way, but mm, differently. <laughs> it's the same numbers, but just shown differently. So I can tell that I have 19, I have 18, 17, and 19, 26, 21, 24, 26, 27, 21, 30, and 31. I can still see all of my data correctly. From here, you'll get questions um, based off this data. How many 26s? I have two. How many 21s? I have two, right? How many, uh, how much do I have total in this category? So then you would add 26 plus 21 plus 24 plus 26. So it's, there's a lot of things that you already know how to do, a lot of the skills that we've learned in previous units, but now you're applying them to analyze your data. Uh, let me show you the same thing, but in decimals so you can get the hang of it, okay? <laughs> We're basically doing the same thing here, but instead of, I don't want you to get stuck on that stems are always tens and leaves are always ones. That's not necessarily the case. It's just splitting up the two different place values of whatever it gives you. Um, so uh, if I had decimals, it works the same way. I would make my stems, leaves, and then in this case, my stems would be the ones place value and the leaves would be the tenths place value, right? on the other side of the decimal. So taking them one at a time, um, looking through, I see one, twos, three, fours. So my stems are going to be just that. Let me grab a different color. Um, it'll be one, two, three, four. Those don't need to repeat themselves. Stems always stay as just like a one or two digit number, right? So stem stays. Then going through to make my leaves. So 1.2, 1.3, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.5, and 1.7. Oh, and one more, 1.8. That's it. 2.2, 2.6, 2.6, 3.5, and 4.0. So now I've created my stem and leaves plot based on the decimals just as easily as we did for the tens and ones. Um, the only issue here, or that could become an issue, is if you forget that these are decimals. So let's say in your problem, sometimes they might give you um, answer choices as though it was like a whole number. So it'll say, how many do you have in the twos? And you start adding them up and you're like, oh, 22, 26, and 26, and you add them up and it has a whole number there. You can easily make that mistake. Um, you have to remember that these were decimals, right? So 2.2, 2.6, 2.6. So if I were to add those up, that answer is very different than a whole number answer. So just be careful. Um, it's different because it has decimal. Um, but yeah, this is a stem and leaf plot. Hopefully it makes sense. If not, please be sure to go into Dreambox to practice um, or ask me questions in Zoom. Um, but yeah. <laughs>
Thank you for watching another episode of Bath Math. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, as always, in our Zoom calls. Um, be sure to jump into Dreambox and be practicing those assignments. Um, and yeah, this is the last week of this unit, so make sure that you're practicing as much as you can and checking out those may-dos as well. Um, have a great week, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.